What's up guys, how are you? I am having a great day and I reckon so are you. So today we will be learning Hamming code. The theory and basics of Hamming code would be explained in this video lecture. The three points which are very important in Hamming code are written on the screen. Number one is Hamming code is a technique used for error detection and correction. Number two, it only detects single bit errors. So if there is a burst error, by that I mean two or more bits are flipped or are erred, then we cannot find out the error in that case by using Hamming code. And the number three is parity bits are added in data bits at places like two raised to n, where n starts from zero and goes till one, two, three, or four, depending on the size of the data bits which you are having. So basically, you don't need to worry about the third point right now. I will take one example, and that would become pretty clear in a matter of few minutes. So parity bits are the bits which help us to understand and find out where exactly the error is. So this was the very nitty gritty of Hamming code. Now let's take an example of a four bit data so that you would understand what exactly parity bits are and what are the data bits. So this is an example of a 4-bit data with parity bits appended. Uh, well, I have not written there anything, but in a matter of few seconds, I am going to write it. So let's start. So now the parity bits would be at position 2 raised to n. So the first parity bit would be at the position 2 raised to 0, which is 1. The second parity bit would be 2 raised to 1, which is 2. The third parity bit would be at 2 raised to 2 which is the fourth position and so on so let's fill up this array or the bits of data so as i've said the first parity bit would be at the first position so let's name it p1 at position number 2 which is 2 raised to 1 we would have our second parity bit which is p2 at third position we have a data bit. Fourth position, there is again parity, which is 2 raised to 2. So P4, we would name our third parity bit. At fifth position, we would again have a data. At sixth position, we would again have a data bit. And at seventh position, we would again have one data bit. So when all these things are completed, the, we find out the parity bits for the corresponding data bits, then our data is said to be encoded in Hamming code. And for most examples, 4 bit of data is used. So this algorithm is also called as 7 comma 4 algorithm, which is the Hamming code itself. So this was the example for 4 bits of data. You can extrapolate this algorithm and use it for any number of bits. Just you have to remember this thing that 2 raised to n so that if you have uh, one more bit of data in this array itself, then here you would have 2 raised to 3, which is 8, which would be the fourth parity bit. But for our context, we are using only four bits of data as examples. So I'm not going to go into that, but that is pretty simple and you can extrapolate on the same theory 2 raised to nth bit would be the parity bit and other bits would be the data bits okay so up till now i think it's pretty clear now let's take an example and finish up the nitty-gritty of this and uh, in our examples we will be using even parity which means even number of ones you can as well use odd parity but um, as far as the de facto method is considered, the even parity is used. So even number of ones we would be using. So now let's take a random 4-bit data and encode it in Hamming code. So for example, let's take data bits such as 1, 0, 0, 1. So now what you need to do is start to fill it from the left side. So at data bits, you are going to fill this number. So 7 is a data bit, we would have it over here, 0, 
0 now we cannot fill it in the fourth position because it is reserved for the parity bit so now you write 1 over here in the third position now our task is to find out the parity bits that is the total number of ones should be even now let me tell you how to find out p1 so this block we need to find out this block so for finding out the parity of this block you need to xor 3 5 and 7 so xoring this 1 0 and 1 we find out that it is already in even parity so we put a zero over there so now check that one three five and seven this block uh, made by the bits of one three five and seven have even number of ones if it has then you're right so at third position is one one and at seventh position is one one so yeah the block which corresponds to parity p1 is in even parity so our task is done for p1 so for p2 you need to check 2 and 3 leave 2 which is 4 and 5 you have to leave and then check 6 and 7 this block of bits which consists of 2 3 6 and 7 should have even number of ones so going through finding our even parity at the second position which is the parity 2 we would again have a zero because there are already two ones in there so now uh, p2 is also fine now let's go and find out p4 for p4 you need to check the four bits which are in concatenation which is four five six and seven so in this three bits there is only one one so in the fourth parity bit we would have one so now which is it is pretty simple that if you want to find out p1 then it's take one leave one so you take one into consideration leave two take three into consideration leave four take five into consideration leave six and take seven into consideration for p2 you take two and leave two so starting from two you take into consideration 2 and 3, leave out 4 and 5, take into consideration 6 and 7. So in similar way, for P4 you can guess that we have to take 4, 5, 6, 7. And if there are any more bits in your data, then you need to leave 8, 9, 10, 11, and then again consider 12, 13, 14, 15. So this was all about it guys. So we have our encoded data. So 1001, when encoded, looks like this one zero zero one one zero zero so this is how you encode by hamming code by using the parity bits so i think this concept is pretty clear in next video lecture we will find out how to find the error in hamming code okay see you then bye, -bye.